السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈاکٹر ذاکر نائک وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ایم رمیش اشرف عبد الرحیمان آئی ایم فرام ملیشیا ریسائڈنگ ان کچنگ سراواق آئی ایم فورٹی سکس ایئرز آف ایج لیونگ وتھ اللہ رزیکی آف انویسٹمنٹ انکم اینڈ سم ٹریڈنگ انکم آئی ایم میرڈ وتھ فائیو کڈس سبحان اللہ آل آر ان دا دین آف اسلام اینڈ گروئنگ دا تقوا اینڈ ایمان اینڈ توحید مائی کوشچنز آر ایز فالوز <clears throat> my father died as a Muslim, but my mother who is still alive and well is a staunch Christian belonging to evangelical church, belonging to evangelical church. So are my immediate family members as some are Roman Catholics, some are also Hindus or should I call them Vedantist, but they worship idols. Big family of more than few hundreds all around the world. We are but the only handful of Muslims in the family. My question is, if someone passed away in my family, what should be the correct way for me as a Muslim to behave, participate and or offer my prayers to the dead? Question number two. I am constantly offering my duas in my salah for Allah to provide hidayah and guidance for my mother and my family members to the right way which is to worship Allah and accept Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the messenger and final prophet but the more i pray the more i see the reaction and messages from them to convert me back to christianity and seek repentance saying that without jesus christ peace be upon him i am worthless and will not be able to achieve all the wealth and good life that i'm enjoying now is there something wrong in my prayers to allah or am i asking allah in an incorrect manner Final question, since my father was a Muslim, is it permissible for me to offer duas for my parents in a single recitation, considering my mother is still a Christian? Jazakallahu khairan tazk. Jazakallahu khairan kathira. The brother mainly has asked three questions. He's a Muslim from Sarawak. His father was a born Muslim who married a Christian and his mother happens to be a staunch Christian and has an accepted Islam. So basically he has asked three questions. One is regarding the first that since majority of his relatives are Christians, some are Hindus, hundreds of them throughout the world. Amongst the family, he and his children and wife who are practicing Muslims, Alhamdulillah, are a handful of Muslims amongst all the relatives. His main question is that can he attend funeral? Can he attend? Can he do dua for them after they die? Can he mix around with them? Second question. Third question is that, that can he do dua together for the mother and the father together. Father is a Muslim, mother is a Christian. And, and the last question is that he prays for them but they always say that uh, he will not get all this blessing. It's only because of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He does dua for them. Is the dua correct or not? As far as the first question is concerned, that can he attend the funeral of the non-Muslim, whether it be Muslims or Christian? Allah gives the reply in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 84. That, O Prophet, you cannot pray for them, referring to the non-Muslims and, and the Munafiks, the hypocrites. You cannot pray for them after they die. And you cannot stand at the grave because they rejected Allah and his messenger and they were against they were enemies of Allah and his messenger so this verse of the glorious Quran Surah Tawbah chapter 9 verse number 84 is very clear cut that you cannot pray for the non-Muslims and the Munafiks after they die you cannot stand on their grave now regarding attending funerals there's a hadith in which once there was a funeral of a Jew passing by and the Prophet stood up. So the Sahaba has told, Ya Rasulullah, this is a funeral of a Yahud, of a Jew. The Prophet saw that. So what? He's a human being. From Allah we come and from Allah we and to Allah we return. So based on this hadith, there is no problem respecting a dead body, even if it's of an unbeliever, of a non-Muslim. That is very clear cut. Regarding attending and bearing as far as bearing 
a non-Muslim is concerned, we come to know that if the non-Muslims among themselves can bury the non-Muslims, we should not, it is haram for us to bury them. But if there is a situation where no one is there to bury the non-Muslims, then the Muslims are permitted to bury them. And this we get from the indication, from the incidents of after the battle of Badr, where many of the enemies who were non-believers were killed and the Prophet told the Sahabas to bury them. So if the non-Muslims, there is no one to bury them, as a last resort, then the Muslims can bury them. Otherwise, in the normal circumstances, when the non-Muslims can bury the non-Muslims, or the relatives of the non-Muslims can bury, we should not do, it's not permitted. It's very clear cut that as far as praying for a non-Muslim who died as a non-Muslim, committing shirk, it is haram. It is also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Maryam, chapter number 14, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to Ibrahim alayhi salam that you cannot pray for your father for forgiveness. After he dies, so the Prophet had promised he'll pray, he prayed, but when he came to know from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he cannot pray even for the father if he's died as a mushrik. So after a person has died, unanimously all the scholars agree and the Quran is very clear that you cannot pray for a non-Muslim for his maqfira, for his forgiveness, for his well-being after he has died. Bearing is concerned, you cannot bury unless there's no one to take care. Then as a case of humanity, you can bury. As far as praying for a person who died, it is not permissible after he died. As far as attending funerals are concerned, it is unanimously agreed amongst all the scholars that no one can attend the funeral prayer of a non-Muslim. Because in the funeral prayer, of a non-Muslim, you are asking for forgiveness and you cannot be part in that. But as far as attending the other aspects of a funeral of a non-Muslim, the general ruling is there that the Muslims should not attend the funeral of a non-Muslim unless he is a close relative. And this we come to know from the incidents that when, when Abu Talib was the uncle of the beloved Prophet who supported him who was one of the staunchest supporters of the Prophet, but because he died as a mushrik, he did not accept Islam. The Prophet himself did not attend the funeral of his uncle, who was one of his staunchest supporters. But he told his cousin, he told his cousin Ali Radhalaw An to go and attend the funeral of his father. Hazrat Ali Malla be peace with him was the son of Abu Talib. He was the cousin of the Prophet. Because he was the father, he told him to attend. So he, he cannot pray for the maqfira of his father. He cannot pray when the father has died, that may Allah forgive him. But he can attend the funeral, but not the funeral prayer. Scholars differ that when, if you are a relative, you can go with the procession of the funeral, some scholars say that you should be ahead of the funeral procession so that the, the procession is behind you. Some scholars say it is accepted you can be at the side. That means all agree we cannot follow the procession. It is preferable to be ahead. That also if you are relative. If you are not a relative, majority of the scholars say you cannot. Only a minority of the scholars say a non-Muslim who is not a relative can attend the funeral, but the majority of the scholars of the opinion that if you are not a relative, you should not attend the, the funeral, not even the procession. And when the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not do to his uncle who protected him, how can you do? But if you are a relative, you can, but you should not take part in the funeral prayer. That is very important. So when you are following the procession, see that your head is preferable. Some scholars say you can be at the side also, but you should not follow. So as far as attending funeral, this is very clear cut. But coming to the other part, this is the main question that has been answered. But as far as giving condolences to the non-Muslim relatives of the person who has died, this is accepted. If you visit a non-Muslim who is sick, it is mustahab. Visiting a sick person is mustahab. Visiting a Muslim who is sick is a mustahab. Even visiting a non-Muslim who is sick is mustahab. You can very well visit a person 
whose relatives have died. He's a non-Muslim. Give condolences. You can very well sympathize, but see to it that do not pray for the person who has died. You know, it's a common saying that when you meet people in condolences, may your father's soul rest in peace. You cannot say this. You cannot say this to your relative, who is your cousin, and your uncle maybe, who is a non-Muslim who has died. You cannot tell to your cousin that may the soul of your father rest in peace. This is praying. For Makhfara, this is not permitted. You can go, you can sympathize, you can say, do you want any help? Do you want any money? Do you want some support? Fine. You can sympathize. You can, you can give your condolences. But see to it, you, denote, you do not use such words which are asking for forgiveness of your father who has died or asking something close to Jannah or good life in the hereafter. You take care. Very well, you can visit. Even if you are not a relative, you can visit a non-Muslim friend. No problem. After the funeral is over, Give condolences, whether him when he's sick, all this is permitted. It may be a good opportunity to dawa, no problem. So as you have majority, hundreds of non-Muslims, I would say, regarding a second question, I would say, as far as possible, intermingle with them. Whenever there's a opportunity, if they're sick, go out of your way to visit them. Take from them some fruits. Take for them some gifts. This will soften your, their hearts and they may accept the message you are conveying about Islam to them much more easier. They should feel that the Muslims are very good people, they are loving people. So as far as your non-Muslim relatives are concerned, or generally if you have non-Muslim friends, they, it is good that you visit them when they are sick, when they are in trouble, help them, support them financially, give them gifts, all this is fine. Only attending funeral prayers, even if your relative is haram, Praying for them is haram or without attending funeral procession if your friend is not accepted, if your relative is accepted. Other things, no problem. You can mix with them, you can be kind to them and while doing this, you can show how good Islam is. So that answers your second part of the question, how you deal with your non-Muslim relatives. Be kind to them, be loving to them. Coming to the third question that you asked, that they tell me, that all these good things in your life is because of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. You pray to Allah, but yet they are on their religion. What should you do? I would say continue praying for them. Pray for them that may Allah give them hidayah. Your mother is alive. She is a staunch Christian, yet she is alive. The best dua you can do for your mother is may Allah give her hidayah. You can also do dua, may Allah give her hidayah and after giving hidayah, may Allah put her in Jannah. As long as she is alive, you can pray for hidayah, you can even pray that after hidayah, may Allah put her in Jannah. If she dies, inshallah she will not. If she dies as a mushrik, if she dies as a Christian and does not accept Islam, which inshallah she will not. That time you cannot pray for a makhfara. But when she is alive, very well you can pray, you can, the best prayer is give her hidayah, you, you can even Pray along with your father, but naturally both are different because your father is dead. You, you pray that may Allah forgive his sin and put him in Jannah. For your mother, you have to say may Allah give hidayah. So the dua would be different. May Allah give hidayah and after giving hidayah, may Allah forgive her sin and put her in Jannah, no problem. But once if any of your relatives die as a non-Muslim, doing shirk as a mushrik, then you cannot pray for them. And coming to your last question, that they say that if you what is happening to you is only because of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and you should accept, and they are always coaxing you, what should you do? My advice to you would be, as I told earlier, visit them, be kind to them, be loving to them, as far as their mother is concerned, look after her, give her monthly allowance, whatever you can afford, give her gifts, be kind to her, see to it to take care of whatever problem she has. Then, see to it that you do dawa. Gift her a copy of the glorious Quran, the English translation. What you can do, you can send links of my YouTube videos. Or as I told, she can, you can very well, she can come on the platform Falidaya and we can give her a complimentary, absolutely free, high quality 4K subscription so that she can watch the videos. There are many videos of mine on Christianity, similarity with Islam and Christianity. There are videos... Quran and Bible in the light of science. The video was Christ really crucified. There are debates. 
There are many other speakers, also of Sheikh Ahmed Didad, and more than 40 authentic Islamic speakers. And she can search for the answers. And inshallah, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah give hidayah to your mother. You have to be kind, you have to be loving, you should not get angry with your mother. She is your mother, even though she is a non Muslim, she is your mother. The Prophet said, Jannah lies beneath the feet of your mother. Even if she is a non Muslim, you have to love her, you have to obey her, as long as those things which she tells you, which is against the Sharia, against the Quran, against the teaching of Allah and His Rasul, only those things you should not obey her. All the others you have to obey. Allah clearly mentions in the Quran, in in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 7, as well as Surah Luqman, chapter 31, Allah says that if your parents strive and struggle to make you worship somebody else besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't obey them. But yet, live with them with love and companionship. My request to you would be, be kind to her, be caring to her. If she tells you something which is not against the share, and if you don't like, maybe she tells you, Son, I want you to wear a blue t-shirt. You don't like blue color. You hate it. But for the sake of the mother, wear blue t-shirt. Because blue is not haram. So even those things which you don't like, as long as it's not haram, it's not against the Islamic Sharia, see to it you go out of the way. See to it that there should be a marked difference that you are a very obedient son. Follow everything what she says except those which are against the Sharia. And be kind to her. Be loving to her. Send gifts to her. Keep on meeting her. Keep on speaking to her. You are the pathway for her Jannah. See to it, you do Dawah with Hikmah and with Husna. And inshallah, Allah will give you success. Hope they answer the question. 